Dear friends, in module 2 in HSC course under NPTEL IIT Madras, we are discussing accident modeling, risk assessment and management. In this lecture, which is the fifth lecture in module 2, we are going to talk about a case example on accident modeling, which will be the part of the case study did at IIT Madras. We now pick up an example study and need to understand how the accident modeling can be done using the support of a software. I will also show you the steps involved in making a numerical model for gas dispersion release studies as done at two case studies in location given as masked in the study. The current study which I show you will facilitate a better idea of hazards, consequence and risk assessments involved in an LPG liquid petroleum gas filling station. Two filling stations are identified. The location of these filling stations are masked for strategic reasons. The study will explain completely how the consequence analysis, risk assessment and hazard identification has been carried out in these two filling stations located at different geographic locations in the world. It is of course a preliminary study which will help you to understand the risk assessments involved in the LPG plant. The outcome of the study should help installation of new or expansion of existing plants nearby that locality. As we all understand when we compute risk assessment or hazard identification or consequence analysis, the outcome should be understandable to the general public. So, I must get a societal risk plots, an individual risk plots, the economic perception of risk involvement and assessment of these kinds of studies are very important in the economical perspective of any oil and gas industry. So, the outcome of these two case studies which I will show you in consecutive lectures will make you to understand how the societal risk, individual risk and economic perception of risk assessment and management can be perceived easily using a software. As we all know for doing any risk assessment or consequence modeling, first step the most difficult step is identifying the failure cases and the corresponding consequences of a given study. So, the table which is shown in the slide here is the list of possible failure cases and the corresponding consequences of an LPG filling station. This table has been prepared after detailed site inspection to the site and in consultation with the HAZOP team and with the plant managers involved in safety and risk assessment of these two plants. If you look at the table here, seven cases are listed as failure cases which are commonly accepted in the open domain literature for such similar analysis. I would urge the participants to refer to the literature review or the papers referred in the NPTEL website of HSE course. Let us quickly list, look at the list of the failure cases, full bore rupture or failure of LPG outlet lines of the bullets. Now, the failure mode of such bullet failure is usually considered as random failure. Let us see what would be the consequences if these bullets rupture or full bore failure happens on the outlet lines. It can result in dispersion, it can cause jet fire, it can cause vapor cloud explosion. I hope all of us understand the important definitions and classifications of these kinds of consequences as applied to gas release models. Please refer back to the previous slides and the lectures, you will get an idea about the definition of these as well as consequences of these as severe as they are as applied to any process industry, in particular oil and gas industries. The second failure case which is generally attempted to be done for risk management and assessment in oil and gas LPG stations essentially is certain percentage of the cross sectional area failure. For example, you want a big diameter pipe, the whole diameter pipe may not fail. So, one cannot need not assume a full bore rupture, but you can always assume a partial rupture of the pipeline. It is a general property of any given pipeline because of the aging effect, there can be leaks in the pipeline. This leaks will result to local stress concentrations which when expand and start giving rupture in a partial cross section area. So, we have an example here considering. 20 percent of the cross section area, if it fails 
what would be the failure mode. The failure mode on such cases is unpredictable, therefore they are random in nature and it may result in again dispersion, jet fire and vapor cloud explosion. You can also see the other failure cases as LPG pump discharge line board failure, road tanker failure, LPG pump mechanical seal can also fail, LPG pump outline gasket can fail and of course the road tanker unloading arm in the case of the station can also fail. You see except for one specific case remaining all failure modes are essentially random in nature but for any specific material failure as in the case of a gasket failure. So, if you have any mechanical component whose failure mode is completely attested or attached to the mechanical fault for this specific release alone one can also do an FMEA as we all understand what is the use of an FMEA for working components in mechanical as well as process industries. So, one can do an FMEA and improve the design so that the seal does not fail. However, if there is a mechanical pump seal failure which happens on LPG pumps then in that case though the failure mode is mechanical however the consequences in all the cases are almost same. Further consequences can be LPG unloading vapor compressor outlet, catastrophic failure of a single bullet and domino effects of the bullets which is the cascading effect of series of bullets. As we all understand generally in LPG filling stations you always have series of bullets packed with the required distances and the dikes constructed around these bullets for operational and safety reasons. So, all the failure modes essentially in LPG stations have been certified and understood and inspected as random failure modes. You cannot predict this failure at all in advance and the consequences essentially can usually be dispersion, jet fire or unloading vapor cloud explosion or sometimes it can be even a fireball and blowy. So, we are now into the definitions of all of these. So, let us quickly see after listing the causes of failure and then the corresponding consequences of this failure, let us go to the next step of risk assessment of this specific station. As per the literature, one is interested to also identify varieties or types of damage that can be caused in an LPG station. The moment I say type of damage as per IS. 15656 Indian Standard Code of Practice 2006, there are common types of damage accepted and recommended for analysis for petrol chemical industries. One is effect of thermal radiation on the plant, other is effect of over pressure on the plant. When we talk about thermal radiation, obviously the type of damage will be classified dependent on what is the radiation intensity. As we all know, radiation intensity has got a major classification of 4.5, 12.5 and 37.5 kilowatt per square meter. However, one can also try to find out the effect of as low as thermal radiation intensity varying from 0.7 to 1.6 as well. If you look at the types of damage caused by these kinds of radiation intensities as suggested by the Indian code of practice, if you have a very high value of radiation intensity, it can result a type of damage as to the complete process equipment. Whereas, when you have a very low thermal radiation intensity, it can cause equivalent to solar radiation effect on a given plant. Similarly, the second type of damage identified as a major damage in petrochemical industry is effect of over pressure. We all know pressure is generally measured in bar. So, varying from 0.3 to 0.01 on the other hand contradictory as low as 0.01 to as high as 0.3. 0.3 could cause a major damage to the structure whereas 0.01 can result in cracking of windows, glass breakage, etc. Now, most importantly, what will be the casualty probability if this kind of over pressure damages are foreseen in the given system? So, it varies somewhere from practically close to 0 to that of as high as 25 percent. Let us now dis discuss about the consequence modeling of the dispersion releases in an LPG plant. The foremost part of study will focus on the dispersion release models. So, when you talk about dispersion release models, the first factor is computation of lower flammability limit distance. It is the distance within which or beyond which the flammability limit 
will be having a serious consequence on the dispersion release models. So, the equation suggested by Weber is given here. In this case, the load probability limit for LPG is taken as 17,000 parts per million. Now, once you have a value of m lower, much lower than 1, the expansion fan and the compression waves can result in a flammability level which results in a slip line or the reflector chop whereas this is a possibility where the m number goes lower than 1 whereas this is a region where the m number is much lower than 1. <coughs> If the m number is slightly higher than 1, then we result in a boundary of a different nature. So, to capture this particular dispersion release, we have got an equation suggested by Weber, which is a function of x, y and zeta, where x and y are the downward and crossword directions respectively and r, z and r, y, r, z and r, y in this equation are the vertical and the crosswind distances in meters respectively. Zeta of course is the distance from the plume center in meters and C naught is the initial concentration of the fuel mixture in parts per million because the value is also available LFL in parts per million. Whereas in the case of the exponential m and n, m is the normalized density function and n is a correlation of atmospheric flux gradients used in this equation. The second consequence would be interestingly focused on jet fire because there is another outlet as we see as we saw in the last table. Jet fire is nothing but an intense highly directional fire resulting from the ignition of a vapor or a two phase release with significant momentum. According to Chamberlain model as suggested below, <coughs> the value can be obtained for jet fire which is a function of Fs which is the fraction of heat radiated. H combination is the heat of combustion of fuel mixture in joules per kg and A is the total surface area of the flame in square meters and M is the mass in kg. The third consequence as you saw on the table is Blevy, boiling liquid vapor explosion. The equation given by Brown 1959 is shown on the right hand side. The boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion is nothing but a sudden loss of containment above its normal boiling point at the moment of vessel failure. It results in development of cracks. The energy released is given by the value as you see in the equation, which this gives rise to a blast wave on the fireball. In this equation, P1 and P0 are the absolute pressure of fluid in Pascal and absolute pressure of atmosphere in Pascal. V1 is the volume occupied by the stored gas in cubic meter and mu is a specific heat ratio at the failure state. The other consequence seen in the table of an LPG gas release is the fireball. Fireball are nothing but short lived flames which generally result from ignition and combustion of turbulent vapor to phase fuel in air. It results in a catastrophic failure, it dissipates large amount of thermal radiation According to TNO yellow book model, the energy released using a fireball is given by this equation where Fs in the above equation is the fraction of total available heat energy radiated by the flame and delta Hc is the net available heat radiation in joules per kg. In this equation D can be 6.48 m to the power of 0.325 whereas Td which is used is 0.825 m to the power of 0.26 and of course the distance h is given as 0.75 d. Let us come into the case study examples which we will discuss in this lecture partly and then continue with the next lecture. We are talking about the consequence model and accident release modeling for two LPG stations located at two different locations. The geographic conditions of both the locations are different. So, they are masked as XXX plant and ABC plant respectively. So, the picture which shows you is the layout of the XXX plant and this is the layout of the LPG filling station at ABC plant. Weather data plays a very important role in accident modeling. If you look at the weather data of ABC plant right from January till December, the stability class as defined by international standards varies from B, C and E. Depending on the stability class, let us select the wind speed in meter per second as shown here. 
relative humidity and atmospheric temperature in degree Celsius. The same data parallel is also given for the XXX plant location varying from February till March of the following year. Of course, stability class if you see here it varies from A and F which are not present in ABC plant. On the other hand, the wind velocity, the humidity and the temperature variation and of course the stability class are different for XXX plant compared to the top ABC plant. So, two different plants at two different geographic locations are considered for the study just to compare the effect of these data on the final outcome of the study. Here is now do consequence assessment. Let us start with doing dispersion release modeling. So, it is interesting to know what would be the hazard distance for the lower flammability limit of the LPG. As we said, these are some of the failure cases what we identified in the initial table, full bore rupture of the outlet line coming from the storage bullet and 20 percent cross section area failure of the outlet line from the storage bullet. The left hand side figures or the tables give you for ABC plant and the right hand side tabulated values are shown for XXX plant. For different weather conditions, the LFL distances has been worked out from the software model directly for lower flammability limit of LPG gas. So, you can very well see here for different weather locations, though the geographic location of both the plants are different, that is why the weather locations are different. However, the LFL distances in terms of meters is not varying much for the entire year. So, therefore, the influence of hazard distance in terms of LFL on the dispersion release is marginal compared to the weather conditions or the geographic locations of the plants. If you talk about the 20 percent cross section area failure of the outlet line for the weather conditions selected in the problem for two different locations, again the influence of the failure from the weather conditions and LFL in hazard distances is again marginal because it is more or less same for the entire year for both the plant locations. Let us look at the other failure cases nominated in the table earlier we saw catastrophic failure of the storage bullet, pump discharge line failure, road tanker failure for the entire year. Now, here the influence of the weather conditions in terms of different types of failure is significant. However, when you compare them for these different locations except for certain period the variation is not significant. Similarly, for other types of failure as pump seal failure, gasket failure and unloading arm failure, the left hand side shows the data for the ABC plant and the right hand side shows the data for the XXX plant for the entire year for the full year period taken for the study. However, if you look at the influence of different types of failure that arise from the weather conditions for the single plant, they are significantly different. However, when you compare them, for a specific type of failure for throughout the year, though the locations are different, the variation is not very significant. Based on the dispersion release LFL distances, hazard distances, one try to find out what is the dispersion safe distance for the two plants located, what we call as lower flammability limit hazard distance for both the plants ABC and XXX in meters. For different types of failure cases identified in the problem, you will see that the hazard distance for a specific plant varies significantly. It is as low as 21 meter to as high as about 160 meters. Whereas, in triple X plant location, it is as low as 24 meters or 23 meters and as high as only 100 meters. On the other hand, the location of the plant which is influenced by the weather data, the stability class and the wind velocity and humidity plays a very important role in deriving the safe hazard distance for dispersion release models for a specific plant. Therefore, friends it is very important that whenever two plants located at different geographic locations with different stability class, one cannot actually compare the distances in terms of dispersion between the plants located at different geographic locations. On the other hand, if I made a study 
on a specific plan at x axis location, you cannot extrapolate the results to a YAV plan which is located geographically at a different place because the local stability class, the wind velocity, humidity, temperature influence significantly the dispersion distances that arise from any dispersion release models. That is very important. Therefore, a comparison or extrapolation of these distances done for one study cannot be interpolated for the next study. It is very important. So, if you really wanted to do the hazard distance estimates for a specific plan, it is always local to the plant. It cannot be highly generalized. Let us try to see what could be the LFL variation, lower flammability limit variation with atmospheric stability class for an ABC plant. As I told you, we will not now compare ABC and X axis for different failure ranges, but we will try to see what are the factors that influence the LFL safe distances only within the specific plant location. So, if you look at the stability class influence on the LFL variation for an ABC plant location, which is also plotted as the atmospheric stability class varies from a range of A to G. The stability class of A to G very clearly specifies the visibility, the humidity, the temperature range. In the present study, the velocity is taken as 3.125 meter per second, relative humidity of 0.76 and atmospheric temperature at which the study is conducted is about 29.04 degree Celsius. So, different legends show different types of failure which are taken as catastrophic or very highly hazard failures for the specific location. Full bore rupture, 20 percent cross section area of type line, pump discharge line failure and road tanker failure. So, in all the cases obviously, the failure variation distances in the hazard percentage keeps on increasing as the stability class changes from A to G. However, in certain ranges you will see they are more or less same. So, on the other hand, the stability class influence on the LFL variation for a specific location is and cannot be generalized for all the plants as such in different locations and it plays a very important role that the variation of hazard distance is significantly influenced by the bar pressure and of course the mass flow rate which is indicated here. And as we all understand when the mass flow rate is not in the range of a specific chosen type of failure, you cannot compare these modes of failure or types of failure also for a given stability class. But one thing we can learn very clearly here is that the influence on stability class on the variation of hazard distance is significant for certain stability classes and it is marginal for certain stability classes. Now, the same variation for another plant which is now compared locally. In this case, deliberately the velocity, relative humidity and temperature are different from that of the ABC plant. And here also we get the similar significant result saying that the stability class influences the LFL variation distance for a certain class of stability, but certain class does not influence significantly. On the other hand, the mass flow rate which is considered as full bore, LFL and pump discharge failure is comparable with that of the ABC plant because these values and the pressure are almost considered to be similar to that of both the plants. So, for a same mass flow rate, for the same pressure variation, we are only identifying what is the influence on atmospheric stability class on the LFL variation. And we have understood that depending upon the geographic location of the plant, the certain stability class influences the variation in hazard distance significantly, certain class does not influence the variation of hazard distance in the LFL variations. Let us talk about the second parameter which is the wind velocity influence on the LFL variation. Now, in this case, the atmospheric stability class in both the studies are considered to be F because F seems to be an influencing factor for the LFL distance in terms of dispersion release models for the same humidity temperature almost relative humidity of 0.76 and 77 for almost the same atmospheric temperature of about 29 and 27 we have studied the influence of wind velocity on the lower flammability limits variation and you will see that 
except for one specific kind of failure which is the rope tanker failure the influence of other types of failure on the LFL based on wind velocity is not significant. So, if the wind velocity is changed and for a stability class of F which is highly influential on the dispersion release models on LFL distances if the rope tanker failure is happened to be there which is a catastrophic failure its influence on the rod distance is very high. The next factor considered is the atmospheric temperature in this case again stability class F is maintained wind velocity of 3.125 and 1.6 is the local specification for the given plants and of course relative humidity is almost same however the atmospheric temperature variation taken from 15 degrees Celsius to that of as high as 35 degrees Celsius shows that they also influence significantly depending upon the type of value what you consider. However, at lower temperatures the variation is not significant but for higher temperature when you consider rope tank failure etc the temperature is significant. You will also see in case of a 20 percent cross section failure area in both the cases the level distance more or less becomes constant after specific temperature. It means the influence of atmospheric temperature for a given stability class for a given wind velocity if the failure seems to be 20 percent cross section failure of the pipeline it is not influenced beyond maybe approximately about 20 degrees Celsius. The next domain of study will be on thermal radiation effect which is caused due to jet fire. Now, we try to compute the hazard distances which are caused due to jet fire for two different plant locations ABC and XXS plant. We have also studied this for different types of failure as identified in the earlier table full bore rupture and 20 percent cross section area failure of outlet lines varying for different thermal load intensity. However, the research shown in the table are varying only from three major thermal intensity rail loads which are considered as per the international standards. So, 4, 12.5 and 37.5 kilowatt per square meter are the thermal load considered for the analysis and of course, the variation in terms of distances is seen for throughout the entire year for all the types of failure. You will also see that the hazard distance caused due to jet fire is highly influenced by the thermal load for a full mode rupture compared to the top a 20 percent cross section failure because here the hazard distance is as high as about 90 meters whereas in this case it is only up to about 40 meters. So, the influence of hazard distance caused due to jet fire by the, the type of failure is also important even for the same thermal load intensity variation. Of course, this is this factor is applicable in other cases also in a different location. So, though the geographic location changes, but the inference what we draw for the annual variation in the hazard distance for full bore rupture is significant compared to that of a 20 percent or a partial rupture of the given pipeline. The similar study is you now carried out for other types of failure like pump discharge from mechanical seal and gasket failure and the results are tabulated in the slide as shown to you. We will also study for rope tanker unloading on failure and you will see that the variation for different thermal load intensity is marginal compared to the top the other failure cases. After understanding this we will like to compute the hazard distances that arise from the jet failure for different failure cases. The hazard distances for the maximum thermal load intensity of 37.5 is tabulated here for two different plant locations. You will see that for a full bore rupture, the hazard distance is about 54 or 50 meter respectively, but for a road tank arm failure, we have about 50 percent of this approximately. So, the hazard distance is influenced significantly by the type of failure, even though we are trying to compare for a specific thermal load intensity concentration. Now, we want to also find out the influence on wind velocity on the hazard distance caused by the jet fire for different thermal intensity except for a specific type of discharge failure that is pump discharge failure the variation for other types of failure is not significant. In all the three cases of thermal load intensity 
for an ABC plant. Let us look at this particular consequence in terms of XXX plant. It also shows a similar study saying that the pump discharge line failure is significantly influenced by the wind velocity variation for different thermal load intensity for XXX plant also as compared to that of ABC plant. The next could be the variation of water distance due to the atmospheric temperature for a specific load intensity of 4 and 12.5 at an ABC plant. It can be very clearly seen there after a specific temperature of maybe 20 or 25, the hazard distance practically remains constant. But in case of a full bore rupture of the pipeline, the hazard distance increases further for increase in temperature. If you look at the variation of hazard distance in XXS plant on atmospheric temperature, a similar trend is also seen in the case of XXS plant. Of course, for a full bore rupture, the thermal intensity of lower value plays a major role which increases the hazard distance after a specific temperature which is not seen at higher thermal intensity variations. Let us now talk about the thermal radiation effect which is caused due to fireball which will be discussed in the next lecture. In this lecture, we attempted to show you how a gas release dispersion model can be studied for an LPG plant located in two different geographic locations in the country. We have also seen what are the factors which influence the hazard distances that cause that is derived from different types of failure. It is very interesting that how such studies can be mathematically or numerically modeled using a software. After I complete this presentation, I will also show you a walkthrough in the software which I have used for the study which will be very useful for the listeners. Any questions, please post to NPTEL website. Thank you very much. Bye.